get everybody in the zone. Um, and the little bar at the bottom. Oh yeah, we're, we're pumped now. Uh, I see it. I see it going. Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm not getting picked up. There's a lot of creaking sounds. What's happening? That's my chair. My chair is very creaky. Yeah. I, I had my feet up because I was waiting. I thought I was oh. going to get a heads up that we were going to start, not that you were just going to. I can't even. Can, I can't even imagine <laughs> how I would try to sit with my feet up at my at my desk here. I'll take a picture and show you after. How is that I sit. not how you sit? Thanks. That's the ideal way to sit. How I would can you literally. Even... I put my chair all the way up to the top, and I can put my feet over the desk. But you knock the monitors See, away. That's the king way no, to sit. I, I have a very big desk, and I leave a bit of space. Oh, I have, end, a I, have a, I have a tiny baby desk for babies. I have a big like corner one. It's badass. I love ah. it. You have to, to mount your monitors on the wall near off. Yeah, you're right. That's the only way, really. See, I I go into like a sonic spin ball, and that's how I sit on my chair, like with the legs completely up. You know, like I'm about to do a spin uh, dash. Okay, I do sometimes sit like L in Death Note, where like you know, it's just like kind of like hunched up on on the thing. Like, yeah, like, that's yeah. another good way to sit. <laughs> also, um, I'm gonna give you a heads up that my nephew is here today. They've gone out at the moment, but when they get back, he might just suddenly get upstairs, and I'll have to take him down and tell them not to let him upstairs for a bit. So okay. I'm, giving you fair, I'm giving you fair warning. We'll have there. another guest. It's that fine. Been, uh, I don't. That could have been a, a good a, a loud scare. shouting two-year-old one might burst into my room unexpectedly. Well, now we've warned them about the jump scare. <laughs> Whatever. Does he have strong opinions on Yakuza? <laughs> I haven't played it in front of him yet. He he was watching me play Monster Hunter World earlier, and he was just shouting things at the screen while I was fighting stuff. Happy things. I, I just respect that. Gibberish. That's, that's our sure. job, basically. Um, uh, he, well, he stayed still for a while watching me play Persona 5 Strikers the other week. He just quite happily sat there watching yeah. it. Yeah, All right. Give him a controller. Not one I do. I, give him, oh. I play on my PlayStation. I give him my Switch Pro controller. In. <laughs> that works. <laughs> he thinks he's playing. So wholesome. That is wholesome. Um, okay, so this is uh, Game Busters, I think. Uh, this is a podcast from GameBuster.com. So if you're new every week, we're going to do a deep dive into a game or a franchise that we just want to talk about. And so everything is horrible and serious outside. Just don't look out the window. We're here to chill. Just close the blinds. Doesn't matter. It, do, it, does, it doesn't matter about the, the, um, our, our senator that went up and voted against minimum wage by uh, kind of doing a big thumbs down and slapping her butt. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a problem. Um, oh, my God. That I, was so weird. Do you see that? I saw yeah. that video with the caption, why would the girl who ran my ho- college anime club do this? <laughs> <laughs> and I fucking died. <laughs> uh, okay. I think the weirdest thing was is that she like tapped Mitch McConnell's shoulder yeah, before she, she like, did hey, it. Mitch, look sort at this. Sort of like then showing he, like, off to her high school crush. Yeah, but then he like still like looked away, I think. He didn't even look. And she was a, she was a Democrat, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a dem- uh, ostensibly eight Democrats voted against yeah, minimum somehow. wage. Somehow, Biden can be fucking controlled. Whatever, I can't do this right now. Oh Listen to me. God. This is this is this is game busters, and I'm near of. Oh yeah, so that's gotta be our record. Because Japanese that's our record for like becoming keep, political. Keep your politics out of my video games. <laughs> yeah, no politics in this Yakuza game. No. no thanks. Yeah, there we go. Um, there is actually surprisingly little politics <laughs> in that series. Interesting. Okay, we'll get we'll get to it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm Nirav, and I'm joined as always by my lovely co-host Ree, who is living in a, a different but similar hell country. <laughs> yeah, um, we haven't had anything that egregious happen. Oh no, the uh, the um, NHS got a one percent health. Uh, oh, yeah. Was it one percent pay rise? Hey, uh, that was a fun. That's almost so that half was our of version of that, basically. <laughs> Um, all right, great. And our, <laughs> our, uh, our special guests today are Luke and Tim from Game Luster. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Which which one was that? Oh, I forgot about the voices. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> they haunt his dreams. I don't know what character... How, that's not actually you. You've got like a soundboard or something. No, no, you 100% know, me. You know what? You sound... Because I just did this video. You sound like Black Doom from Shadow the Hedgehog. That yeah. is that is the voice. Yeah. All right. I was trying to place it. <laughs> um. All right. So yeah, today we are indeed talking about the Yakuza games, mostly focusing on the first one, but we'll kind of like go through the, the franchise and like the impact it's had as well. Um. So uh, in... In honor of Yakuza, which uh, I which I should say up front, Rhi and I both know next to nothing about, um, besides 
just sort of gl- absolutely nothing. Just sort of me watching the trailers for Yakuza Like a Dragon and and some of Luke's video about uh about Yakuza Zero. Um, the that's pretty much my my knowledge of this franchise. So uh, it, I know it's a lot of mini games though. I am aware of that. Mm-hmm. So yes, there's many mini games that uh, many many mini games many many mini games. And so in honor of that, the, at the Hall of Fame luster, I thought maybe we could give everybody a break by not inducting a character who's going to die in the vacuum of space this time, and maybe we could induct the best mini game. Um, send them out there, and they should be fine because they're just like an <laughs> idea, right? I mean, I, I know that we're giving our victims a game to play yeah. while they die. I mean, mm. I, I know at least several of my submissions have. Uh, I, I have don't mean victims. Support, I so. mean honorary guests. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the record, the vic- victims. That could we scratch that. I'm, bl- I'm going to bleep that out in post. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can't kill Skyrim horses. <laughs> uh, Low gear has uh, vacuum. Yeah, they'll be fine. Okay, so uh, Re, why don't you get us started? What did you bring for the best mini game? I went with the one I was gushing about last week, which was the um, contest in Pokemon Gen 4. I spent so much time playing them as a kid. They're like the best bits of the game. You got to dress up your Pokemon. You got to use the moves to get points. I used to force my friends in primary school to play them all the time. And I am the co- the one person who enjoyed that bit of the game. So yeah, Gen 4 contests. Okay. Yeah, I played I played a ton of Gen 3 contests, but like I I did like one contest in Gen 4 and was like this has become overcomplicated. Like it used to be about it used to be about the moves, you know? And now I got to dress it's up my the cones. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the cones. Um okay, so uh Tim, what did you bring? Uh, it's not authentic enough for you yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Um so on the uh, the subject of uh, Pokemon, I I quite liked Gen 5's Pokestar Studios, but that's not what I brought. I just wanted to okay. bring it up. I do what I have it. brought is, um, I mean, you can't even really call it a mini game anymore because it was so good it got its own game, and that's Gwent. And the moment that you mentioned that this was the Fame Luster, I got a message from Kate going, "This, this, you know, you have to tell it, tell it, tell it." Um, but no, it I is, knew it. Yeah, <laughs> not surprised at all. It is. It's a mini game that Tim is just a mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I have my own opinions. I just also repeat Kate. Um, but no, I actually do think that Gwent is a... Kate is actually our guest this week. <laughs> Kate knows nothing about Yakuza, so uh, I'm trying to get Kate into it. Um. um Anyways, but no, it's such a good game. It goes throughout the entire uh, game itself that you can keep finding new stuff. It's one of the only uh, mini games in which you can just throw down a card of yourself, like in canon. (laughs) It's like that and Triple Triad. Okay. I remember the strategy in Gwent was just fill your deck with as many spy cards as possible, just so you can basically beat your opponent by by virtue of just having more cards than them. Yeah, was that's my go-to strategy. <laughs> that, that's, that was basically the strategy, yeah. It was like you would play all your spies as fast as possible, See, I've never and then just make your opponent waste as many cards as they can in the first and second round, so you can just win the third by virtue of having more cards than them. So I've, I've never actually played Gwen. On a scale of, like, Snap to Caravan in Fallout New Vegas, how complicated is it? It seems complicated, but I think it's actually quite simple. It's not the most complicated of these card games okay. by, by at all. Um, Even after they've added a lot of new stuff in the the the, the full version, it's I, still pretty simple to wrap yeah. your head around. I will go on record saying that I played one round of Gwent and I said never again, and um, was very very much done with it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I did. This, maybe it's I, good that Kate isn't here. Then, yeah, to hear maybe that. it is good. Uh, I mean, um, I did. The, I always do the same with like, these card games, like even Caravan and, and Fallout. Like I played one round of that and was like, "Fuck this, never again." Well, I, I have uh, bad yeah. News honestly, for you. I'm the New Vegas defender, <laughs> but it took me like my third playthrough to actually bother to do Caravan just to get the achievement, and I regret every minute. I spent. I don't, I don't fully understand it, even getting the achievement. I mean, it could, it could, you know, it's there's always a worse mini game out there, and by that I mean Blitzball. <laughs> got him yes i hate blitzball oh my god blitzball was the worst don't get me started on that the stress 
I, I have stress. No I grinded well, to get I the only... best outcome, yeah. and it didn't matter. Yeah, I only have um, strategies to mitigate Blitzball, and that's literally score one goal and then hide behind your own goal because the oh. AI can't find you there. Um, all right. Oh. Uh, Luke. I'd have to bring? score one goal first, though. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, Luke, what did you bring? So since we're talking about Yakuza, I figured I'd keep it there because like every Yakuza has so many mini games in it, and it was actually quite hard to figure out. But I'm going to go with a mini game that was featured in Yakuza Zero and Kiwami Two, which is the Cabaret Club Management mini game. <laughs> that sounds fun. Which is genuinely a lot of fun. So the the premise of it is that you are managing a cabaret club. So you have like sort of two phases. You have the preparation where you have to. Uh, essentially assign your roster of women that are going to be working that night who can be recruited through various means, mostly subquests, other side stories in the games that involve women, then you might be able to recruit them. Um, and then you have the actual management where you're running the club, where you have a three minute slot, you have six tables and guests will arrive and they'll have like preferences. It were like they would prefer a girl who's sexy or cute or funny or something like that. So you try to assign the girl that's best suited to that guest. And then, uh, otherwise, it's like managing, keeping an eye out, make sure, making sure the girls aren't getting too tired. So you have, you're making as much money as you possibly can. But I always remember the, the most interesting part of it was trying to memorize all the different hand signals the girls do. Like they'll call for help and they're asking for something, but they don't directly say it. They make some kind of hand gesture and you have to be able to read that to know what they want. Um mm. I, I couldn't tell you what they are now, but when I was playing Yakuza 0 again last year, I did manage to basically memorize all of them. Um, and it's like the thing of... It, I mean, the game will tell you what it is if you wait long enough, but you get it's a bigger reward if you do it fast. And also, both in Zero and Kiwami 2, there is an entire storyline around the management of the cabaret clubs. Mm-hmm. Sort of centers mm-hmm. around uh, basically beating other clubs and becoming the biggest club in <clears throat> Sotenbori. But there's um, Zero has one, and then Kiwami 2's is like a kind of continuation of Zero's Cabaret Club stuff. And I just remember, I think I just sat down and played that all day. That sounds too robust to be a mini game. I mean, it's only featured in two, and I, I think yeah, like... Yeah, like a whole video game. It, it is but a it's, side it's... quest, but no, that's kind of the, the nature of the beast of Yakuza. Like, okay. there's, um, there, there's an entire, like, huge side quest basically around the phone dating mini game yes. in zero that's a fun mini game actually oh, yeah. uh okay wow i mean uh, otherwise and... i would just say the karaoke because i love the little music videos that play those are all, those are great i've seen the gifts. amazing um i like the uh i like this cabaret club management thing because yesterday while i was reading about yakuza uh on uh, online i ended up so far deep into the rabbit hole that I, I read the entire Wikipedia page for hostess clubs. To, <laughs> yeah. So, so I am, I am, I'm aware of what you're doing <laughs> in here. Um, okay. Um, my, my entry is actually going to be the, uh, the loading screen game from Splatoon while you were waiting for a match uh, from the first Splatoon. It was not in the second game. Don't know if anyone is aware of it, but um, when you queued up for a match in Splatoon 1 on the Wii U, on the gamepad... I vaguely remember this, but do refresh my memory. Yeah, on, on the gamepad, uh, you would play a version of the original like Donkey Kong game where you were a little inkling and you were trying to go up, you know, literally just Donkey Kong, but Donkey Kong was replaced with a big squid. <laughs> And uh, you just jump over barrels and climb the ladders and shit, like just like. But that was just like a thing to do while you were waiting for the match to start. And was, it just was the uh, big squid, uh, Mr. Game and Watches one. No, I think it was actually. It looked more like a blooper from Mario. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but it was like uh, it, it was just fun, you know. I was just like that. That's such a nice idea. Like, just give me something to do while I'm waiting for a match to get ready. Um, and it was just like it's just it's just Donkey Kong. Am I right yeah. in thinking that you could actually like buy other mini games for it? I do not know if that's the case. I don't remember being able to do that, but I could I could be I could have missed a crucial part of that game. I guess I've <laughs> yeah, I vaguely remember the fact that you could get others and then also play them during the break. It was pretty cool. Yeah. All shooters should have that. Yeah, I'm typing in Splatoon Donkey Kong. Okay. Um... So let's uh, let's get to the votes. Um, so, Re, where are your votes going? Um, 
I'm not going to vote for myself for once. I'm going to throw one to Splatoon because you just reminded me how neat that was. Um, yeah. And also got to throw one to Yakuza because that is an incredibly bloody robust thing for a for a mini game, a game that already has a crap ton of content. And I'm, I just appreciate that the devs went to that much effort. I'd say so, this, yeah. you should try Yakuza 5. There's five different protagonists in it and each one has their own series of mini games that are unique to them. It's nuts. That game has oh, a certain hell. amount of content in it. How do they keep cranking these things out? I don't know, but they've done a lot this gen alone. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think this is the the big... I mean, a lot of them have technically been remakes. But yeah, this is, I think, the biggest rush of them they've had. Because it was... I would say, what, PS4, Xbox One era, they had Yakuza 0, Kiwami 1 and 2, Yakuza 6, Judgment, and Like a Dragon, as well as the remasters of 3, 4, and 5. Jesus. They've got got a strong output. It's insane. (laughs) Wow. Um, okay, so Tim, where are your votes going to go? Uh, uh, one to Gwent, um, and then one to the Cabaret Club Management, because it is an amazing mini game. Okay. Uh, uh, Luke, how about you? I am a man of honor. I never vote for myself, so I'm going to go for Gwent, because I also would pretty much whenever I would go to a new place, if some, I could play Gwent with someone, it would be the first thing I'd do. Anywhere I went in that game, uh, and I will. I boss. have not played it, but I will give Splatoon Donkey Kong my other vote because that sounds neat. Okay. Um, well, I actually was gonna um, do. A, I definitely want. I definitely want to give one to Cavalry Club Management. Um, that sounds really fun. Uh, I was trying to give one to someone else, but like I actively dislike both of the other options here. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I am going to give one to Splatoon, Donkey Kong. I appreciate the attempt. And uh, so, I I guess really what we're looking at, again, is sort of a... um, This is a cabaret club where uh, where, uh, Inklings come in to look at the the nice Donkey Kongs. I don't know what's happening. I think what you just got is an Inkling hostess. Maybe in Splatoon. Yeah, Inkling... uh, Inkling High School host club. Oh, no. I don't like the implication that they're they're kids. It's well, not kids, wait, cabaret aren't clubs aren't no, necessarily no, like the, the, the sexual. No, no, it's not. A, it's yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not a sex thing. It's it's like a. It's cabaret like going clubs, to Hooters. Oh, I got. It, yeah. I got bad vibes. It's cabaret. like a more. It's like a more. Yeah, <laughs> but even then, I, I, let's not do it with the inkling. Inkling. I wouldn't want let's kids working with, at Hooters. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, I got I you. I got say you. it's Hooters. It's just like you sit down. They have a hostess who comes and sits with you, and their goal is basically to talk to you a bunch, make you feel interesting, and then get you to spend as much on drinks as possible. Many people have said it is sort of the modern iteration of the geisha think... in Japan. Uh, sort of, yeah. I mean, there's no... no... I do not think that's a job kids should be doing. No, I didn't say that. Yeah. I, I didn't... Okay. This, uh, like... <laughs> no, but... No, of course, no, but I'm just saying yeah. because uh, the squid kids are going to be doing sure, it. Sure, okay. I don't I'm... like this. All right, I'm switching it out. Do- <laughs> all of them are Donkey Kong, okay? It's a Donkey Kong host club. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so much better now. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, welcome, Donkey Kong Host Club, to the vast expanse of space. That's going to be a fun mini game for people to play while they're dying, though. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm excited about offering that. Oh yeah, they get to play it on the way to the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's uh. Let's get out of here. So uh, this is Bustums. This is our main segment. We're going to talk today about the development. And history of Yakuza. Um, as I said, it mostly is about like how the creation of the series went and stuff like that. But um, I'll I'll defer to our guests to give us some more um, uh, information on like the later games and stuff. So uh, briefly, uh, like either Luke or Tim, whoever, what what is this game about? Explain to me as if I literally have never heard of Yakuza. Just it is about a man's honor in an honorless world. Okay, it is the story of Kazuma Kiryu trying to make right what other people have made wrong um he is uh i mean in in the original he goes to jail for 10 years gets out you know good behavior uh tries to you know go back that's not gonna happen decides he's gonna you know basically start up his own family um just to try and restore some order to the town he loves and for the people that he loves and one of them is a small girl who is the daughter of his childhood friend. And the story between those two is a big driving force in, well, most of the games, because he's most of the heroes. 
Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, Luke, Luke, you have anything to add to that? Uh, like what Tim said. Yes. Also, uh, weird shit that happens on the streets of Japan. There oh, yeah. are the so weird... many unex- inexplicably silly and bizarre side quests and other misadventures that happen. Goro Majima games. being several of them. Yeah, Majima's just presence at any point yeah. usually indicates yeah. chaos. Yeah, for example, in uh, the 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 way that random encounters are are treated in the game is like Majima goes, "Look, Kiryu, buddy, sweetness, sexy thing, um, you are awesome, but you're you're a little rusty. How about I just randomly attack you until you get your edge back?" Yeah, oh, and you agree that's... to that. That's the system in Kiwami One where they just yeah. make Majima appear all the time and randomly attack you under the under the guise of it helping Key you remember at lost fighting abilities when he was in prison for ten years. Yeah, and it, so he he will show up anytime, anywhere. He'll be Oscar the Grouching. He'll be disguising himself as a um, crossing guard. He'll hide under a giant cone, <laughs> which yeah. leap out on you. Okay, yeah. Uh, this this is this is a lot to process. <laughs> Um, Goro I, Majima is insane, but he makes everything better. I, I also had to touch this, and one of my favorite things that he might do in the first one is um, you can go into photo booths and pose for them, and sometimes he might lean in for the side of it, <laughs> which is amazing because it doesn't do wow. anything else. It's just like Kiyu poses, and then Majima just kind of peers in from the side into the picture. Right. In the really original funny. dub, he was uh, voiced by Mark Hamill. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. So yeah. we're getting a little too into the weeds. Let's 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 uh, kind of talk about how this game was developed. So, um, so the producer uh, uh, Toshihiro Nagoshi, um, he's kind of the he's like kind of the the yakuza guy. Um, he had said for a while now, I wanted to create a powerful, gritty drama where you feel a sense of humanity. After a lot of thought, this is the product we've arrived at, which I, I included because it's just a very Japanese translated sentence. Um. Yes, this is the product we've created for you. Please understand. Um, so the first game actually had a solid. Uh, the first game actually had a solid budget uh, for uh, ish for back then, uh, twenty one million dollars. Um, they uh, Nagoshi. By the way, this is a Sega product. I should say that up front. Um, so Nagoshi chose to create a team uh, assembled out of team members that uh, came from Virtua Fighter Three, Super Monkey Ball, Panzer Dragoon, and Jet Set Radio. Um, he specifically wanted this sort of patchwork Frankenstein team, um, even though like actually the, uh, the team members arrived at work and were kind of like, uh, are we all supposed to be in the same place? <laughs> like, is this right? Um, and Nagoshi was like, yeah, like I, I need people from all such disparate backgrounds to hit the thing that I'm trying to do, which is to make like such a. Uh, such like a disjointed but like still cohesive thing like I, I want it to all be like under one vision but like with a lot of moving parts and i mean you can you can hear just from our description of the mini games that that definitely went through um we haven't even gotten into you said we got into the weeds we are not even in the weeds. we're not yes. into the weeds <laughs> um no. so uh um, i do actually want to no, uh, no. button quickly actually um yeah. So obviously it was this mix match of like Sega teams coming together. I hear a lot of people talk about how this was like Shemu, but like a sellable game that people would like. And yeah. uh, is there any like evidence of that? Is there any Shemu inspiration like in the development? Um, yeah, j- uh, so uh, Nagoshi has cited Shenmu as a thing he enjoyed. Shenmu too. He a lot of a lot of um uh uh, i guess game critics have said like oh this is sort of the continuation of shenmue 2 because it had shenmue 2 had come out pretty recently right before um uh the first yakuza in 2005 and he had said that wasn't really the case um you know just one of one of the many inspirations for the game this wasn't really meant to be like a continuation of shenmue but yeah definitely had some some part in influencing it um okay so um, oh, by, by the way, just to let everyone know, like, Re is not being extremely rude. She just, her internet is extremely <laughs> behind. And uh, there's like a three sec, there's like yeah. a full three seconds of lag going on. I feel so bad. On. Um, so like, just, I try uh, and predict when people are going to stop talking. And I think I interrupt people <laughs> worse when I do that. So, um, it's okay. so sorry. I'm, I'm a around. nice person, I think. Debatable. 
Nero. You're a lot nicer than Nero. Fuck's sake, no, Luke, you, Luke does not get an opinion on this. <laughs> See, there it is. There's all the proof you need. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so during uh, during development, the team did extensive research on Hostess Clubs, which I guess is just going to the Hostess Club. Um yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. research um, in in inverted commas. It's for science. Yeah, it's, um, it's like doing research <laughs> on Hawaii for for a game. You know, you just go to Hawaii for two weeks and come back with vague notes that go volcano beach. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Um, this, I remember uh, that. <laughs> Uh, they spent some time in the Roppongi host clubs. Roppongi is sort of like the nightlife district of Tokyo in a way. Um, yep. I have uh, I have been there, and I remember my, I, I met some uh, friends there when I was in uh, Japan, and that was when I found out my my like tangential high school friend was working for Google because she walked into Google's headquarters in Roppongi like in the middle of the night because she forgot something. Um. So yeah. Oh anyway, that was. Yeah, that was that was a big play. <laughs> that was a big play. Um, the uh, so the setting uh, in the game is a place called Kamurocho, um, and it was based mostly on the red light district of Tokyo called uh, Kabukicho. So the development team wanted to accurately portray the yakuza as best they could, um, especially like in relation to like their code of honor and stuff like that. So they actually originally went so far as that the game had uh, scenes where pinky fingers were like cut off, which is a traditional punishment in the Yakuza, but like the scenes were removed so that the, uh, uh, the Japanese ESRB, which is called Ciro C E R O uh, would give Yakuza like a rating that would allow them to release it. <laughs> um, so they, they did dial back a little bit yeah. on the Yakuza stuff. Does Japan like still have that ban against having like any dismembered body parts in in video games because of its like connotations with the yakuza? I don't believe there's still a ban, but I think it, it gets you kind of an automatic mature rating. Um, the uh, I did remember reading that if if they had included that, that would have basically been the equivalent of like an adults only thing that like wouldn't have allowed it to be stocked on store shelves. Yeah, because they do it in some later games, but they do it off screen and they don't yeah. show the dismembered finger. Even even in stuff like uh, No More Heroes, the Japanese version has some heavy uh, censorship with regards to what they do actually show. Um, like yeah, notoriously, like limbs that even just limbs that get cut off are broken, and um, you know, there's a scene where uh, Travis holds somebody's head, and he doesn't actually hold their head in the Japanese version. Well. Their actual head. There's one point where he's holding a fake head, and they can show that. Incredible. <clears throat> um, so yeah, this was uh, uh, they also did make a new. They also made a new engine for this game uh, that they had not previously had. Um, so uh, this was interesting. They uh, rather than pulling in somebody who was kind of from the games industry uh, as far as their head writer, they brought on Hase Seishu, who was a yakuza crime novelist, uh, to write the story. So this guy had not worked on a video game before, uh, nor had he really done anything other than writing novels. But um, he he said that like he had enjoyed like some you know video games when he was a kid, like you know in the arcades. But he hadn't played. He had really been in part of that you know that world as it had developed. And when he like was called about doing like writing a yakuza based video game, he was like he's like so blown away that this was how far video games had come from asteroids. I think he he mentioned um which like yeah that's a that's a jump if you go straight from asteroids to yakuza 1 that's a good jump um and you could find uh asteroids right in yakuza you know oh yeah i'm sure um at least an equivalent i had that on my calculator in, in high school <laughs> um okay so yeah they uh yeah, um, ha uh, Seishu was uh, extremely excited about the project he put all of his novel work uh onto the back burner so that he could come right for yakuza um he was he was super into it, and Tim, you you mentioned something about like that like some ex Yakuza members have have like um, mentioned how accurate a lot of the stuff is. Mm -hmm. They talked about like um, you know how the, the the shakedowns worked and the the, the hierarchy, the um, the ways in which people would be approached, and uh, you know especially the stuff about host clubs. Uh, I'll see if I can find the, the article again, but it was, you know, three 
Yakuza playing, um, I think it was, I think it might have been Kiwami. I think it came out around then, but um, I'll see if I can find it. But they were talking about, oh, yeah, no, this is totally realistic. And like, okay, that's exaggerated, but it's awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, so also worth noting that the Japanese name of this series is a Ryuga Gotoku, which means like a dragon, uh, which we'll come back around to. Yeah. It's kind of a Resident Evil sort of thing, because like, you know, Resident Evil eventually came back around to the Biohazard with yeah, 7. Yeah, 7 was, yep. subtitle was Biohazard, and then in Japan it was Biohazard Resident Evil 7. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it was the um, first time in uh, many games where that title was actually relevant. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I would say, I don't know. I actually, honestly, even thinking back on two, I don't even know if it's really relevant there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, da, 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 here we are. So um, I, I have a lot of stuff from uh, a lot of quotes from Nagoshi here because I, I think there's pe- people have talked about how like he has um, really uh, he, he's, he's kind of a weird guy. Um, I guess to say the least. Um, so, uh, especially for being in the industry at that time, he was very un- unconcerned with uh, how with how well the 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 game sold. I guess when when in development with it, um, he really was really focused with uh, on trying to do something new and different. Uh, so he specifically said he didn't want to do any fantasy, military, or sports games because he said there was like too much of a market for those games internationally. He, he said that he didn't want to make a game that would sell too well. <laughs> um, so he said, like, if I try to make a game that will appease everyone, like, nobody's going to like it. It's just going to be another video game, right? Um, so he didn't want to follow the market's norms. And so in, in kind of, like, trying to free himself from what the market expected uh, big producers like Sega to put out is is kind of where he stumbled onto, like, what he was trying to do. So this is something really interesting. I have some quotes here uh, from Nagoshi. It was in a way a good thing that we didn't try to cater to the female audience. I think that because we tried to ignore both younger and female audiences, we inherently captivated their interests in the contents of the game, which uh, is, is possible. This next part is probably less possible. Nagoshi suggested that it was perhaps Kiryu's masculinity that attracted the female audience, mentioning that every character is the kind of man every boy wants to be. Um, oh god that's a very I, clumsy way to word a good point i think um i mean it has been translated it is a translated yeah let's, let's give, we'll yeah. give a little credit for that exactly. exactly um i think what they probably intended was that perhaps when you don't try and specifically pander to the female demographic and assume what they want uh you tend to sort of do it more organically i guess um and I mean, I don't know what the men of uh, Yakuza are like. Maybe they are dreamboats. Who knows? Um, but I think what the gaming industry think is a dreamboat for a female audience tends to not actually <laughs> be what one is. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think people assume that like female audiences like big buff guys who are like emotionless and stoic and everything. Maybe the men of Yakuza aren't like that. What are, what are they like? Well, they're big and buff, but they're not emotionless. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're big, yeah. buff, and very. I think that's into... probably what helps. Oh, speaking yeah. from my deep dive into the host club Wikipedia page, there actually is a um, so th- there's like a market obviously for both host and hostess clubs. Um, both of them kind of cater to the to their audience in a different way. Like, so the if you go to a hostess club, which is where you have like female staff, and then it's old Japanese salary men, right? Like coming in after work and, and drinking and then um like the girls will like flirt with them and sit with them and and talk with them you know and stuff like that and like you know just be cute basically is the idea um and just give them like attention but uh if you go to a a, a host club which is you know a bunch of young men um uh, and by the way the staffs of these kind of establishments are usually like 18 to 21 years old um and the the clientele is normally in their like late forties, fifties somewhere. Um, so even if you go to the the host clubs where there are young men there, like the women who go to these host clubs are normally in their like forties and fifties. And I posted a uh, picture oh. of Yakuza Three, Kiryu. Oh, okay. Let's take a look. 
I feel like we, you should Let's put see. a picture of I'm gonna, Yaku's I'm gonna six rate him. because he's like I will, 50 I will do that, that in a second. <laughs> okay, I like this guy. All right. He, I don't know if I, uh, I don't know if he's, uh, I don't know if I want to marry him or anything, but. If you got to know him, you would. He is a delightful human being. Okay, fair enough. Very lovely, very good character. There I would. Go. That's, that's him at like 50 years old. Yeah. Holy totally. shit. Yeah. Okay. He is incredibly well prepared. Oh, damn. Sure. Holy shit. He aged Jesus. like what fine wine. Oh my God. <laughs> what's his, I, I, what's his wait, skin secret? Tim, just one more. Throw him in, throw in a picture of him from Yakuza Zero. Just say so see what he's like when he was 20. Okay. Is it like 18, 20 years old he is in Yakuza man. Zero? And the, keep in mind, this is in the 80s. So he's, yeah, okay. he's like his fashion will old. be impugned, but. What Ooh. the fuck? You, you know what? I'm going to allow the developers to make their very presumptuous statement because they're 100% right. I'd also <laughs> add in uh, across the course of all the games he's been in, Kiyu has been shot multiple times. Yes. That I, think does he make gets, he, I think he gets shot at least a couple of times per yeah. every, per game at this point. Yeah, canonically, <laughs> even if, even if you he don't definitely get got hit. shot in zero. Yeah, he got shot in the second one. I guess like lead, lead must just have like anti-aging shot. properties. Shot all the fights he gets into in the games is crazy. Yeah, uh, um, man is still standing by Yakuza Six. So, Re, I, I think maybe that they weren't on the same page as you because the next quote is, I can't really speak for female fans of the series, but these days guys are total pushovers. So maybe it's because of this that those fans feel so attracted to the main character of the game. I can't say for certain, but it has to be something like that. <laughs> it has to be. I love that confidence. It has to be. Oh, that's so I- funny. <laughs> Um, oh, God. So, they, yeah, they although, understand the female yeah. mind. They've got it. They cracked the code. <laughs> so, yeah, Nagoshi has mentioned, like, yeah, like, I understand that we have a big female audience now, too, but, like, I, I don't want to, like, they-, they said that they haven't changed the way that they've made these games to cater to any audience, really, which nah. is, in a, in, a, in a way, a good thing, because I think that's why, like we said, like, it, it's, it, it's, it is a hit with, like, both male and female fans, like, young and old, like, it's because it isn't trying to pander to them, you know? Do you think any Western dev would take a beat em up game and turn it into a turn based JRPG? Like they have. No, yeah, I, I <laughs> quite simply, no, no I don't think maybe, they would. But. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, anyway, so then uh, in, in localizing this game, Sega had like an aggressive like web and print advertising campaign, and they had an English voice cast impri- uh, with uh, some hits like uh, Eliza Dushku and, uh, of course, Mark Hamill. And Michael so, Madsen. And Michael Madsen, yeah, he's here too. Um, so the uh, localization producer said, when we released the original Yakuza, we saw we knew that the game had been a hit in Japan and we wanted to make sure we put that our, our best foot forward in releasing a new and unique product to Western markets and that would draw just as much acclaim. That did not happen. No, but... I, the, the, <laughs> the original English dub of Yakuza 1 is terrible. Even with the talent they've got, it's terrible. And, and most of that is the I, I'm laying it fully on the director. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Interesting. Because uh, there, there's some great individual like readings. Yeah. Just it's hit or miss. Um, there was an interesting thing with uh, the promotion of Yakuza before they released it. So the trailer where they debuted Yakuza to the West with the English voice track was constructed using an old, like, unfinished soundtrack that sounded terrible, like it wasn't even in full quality. And a lot of fan sites got a hold of it, a lot of game journalists, and were like, oh, this is, like, a fucking low-budget affair. They're putting no effort into it. And even though it wasn't, like, representative of the quality of the final product, um, it was just, like, it kind of ruined the game ahead of time. Like, people were expecting it to be a shitty game. Yeah. Um, I think we that's, that's quite yeah, genius, that, to be I think, honest. I've already, I, I asked him not to bring him up. I think he's trying to get upstairs. <laughs> Give him a Switch Pro controller. What is he trying? Hang on, I'll meet my mind. What's he trying to say? What, what's his wisdom? Oh, nephew of wisdom, what is your wisdom? <laughs> if your Switch Pro controller is too big for you, it is your, not your Switch Pro controller. That is good wisdom. That is good wisdom. <laughs> um... Yeah. So he's um been silence. Yeah, I don't know. God damn it, Luke. Yeah, yeah. Luke... did they get him? Yeah, they're dragging him away. He really, right. really wanted to get upstairs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. You still hear him? Yeah. Yes, yeah, very much so. <laughs> okay. Oh, for good pods. Poor no 
baby. Uh, I want everyone listening to pretend there's not a baby screaming in the background. I want um, everyone listening to a, a pretend that there are three of them. <laughs> so there. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> can you do that in editing? Make it sound like free. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get right on that. Um, so this uh, the Akusa one uh, reviewed okay in the West uh, came out like a seventy five on Metacritic. It was like all right, fine. Uh, again, like a lot of people already had these built in preconceived notions about the very low quality of the game, uh, just from like the trailer that they had mistake. Like they 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 put out a shitty trailer. Don't put out a shitty trailer that doesn't reflect what the game is like at all. Just don't do that. Like that's the opposite no, to what soft. most companies you- do now. <laughs> Ma- yeah. Makes me think of Doom 2016 and how they focused on the multiplayer nobody liked. Didn't say much <laughs> about the campaign and then the game came out and everyone's like, this campaign's amazing, why weren't they talking about this? Yeah. Um, and then they screwed the pooch on uh, Eternal in more ways than one. But also, I thought the game. campaign in that game's really good. Oh, no, I, was I was talking about the, uh, the, the multiplayer. Campaign. Oh, yeah. And the, uh, the, the multiplayer in Eternal. Yeah. Because, like, I, the multiplayer is, like, weird in Eternal. Like, it's, like, two people fighting, like, a demon it's or a, whatever. It's a weird experiment that I just didn't find myself liking that much. That's fair enough. Um, okay, so, yeah, Yakuza, uh, by this game, eventually sold a million copies, which was a huge deal. Um, it is still a high for the series. None of the games have sold a million copies since. Um, so, I, I was, like, a little bit... Uh, kind of uh, surprised at that because i i feel like this is one of those series people would have been maybe more loyal to um but the next highest selling uh game was yakuza 6 that sold 600k and uh then after that was like a dragon the newest one which sold 450k well the, the thing with yakuza was it was relatively unknown in the west until zero zero was the one that kind of caused yakuza mm-hmm. to suddenly get a lot more popular in the west oh, yeah they'd okay. already done yakuza 1 to 5 before that and then zero kind of caused a sudden spike of popularity like it yeah, was the first one i played what was and under I their just, noses i, I mean yeah. part of it helped that the, it so quickly that the graphics were amazing and you know like they learned to put uh kiryu and majima front and center in their advertising yeah yeah um so like uh, the series has now sold a total of 14 million copies which is like not the best but like i also discovered it is the um it is the Sega's second best-selling series after Sonic. Um, it uh, was surprising, like, because I, I, I guess that I, I thought, like, Sega's such a huge company, I, I would have thought they were maybe uh, doing a little better on, on sales, but um, it looks like Sonic is sort of holding, <laughs> holding the company up, even though he keeps making the bad games and people love him. See, maybe they could make money from other games if they made non-Sonic games. If they put games. Knuckles in them. <laughs> Oh, there's definitely oh, okay. enough knuckles in Yakuza. Don't you worry. Oh, <laughs> all right. Wordplay. Um, so, but this was the first ever, this was a weird sort of note. This was the first ever Japanese game to do so well in the West that it got a game of the year type re-release edition with more content. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty good. I mean. Well, the first yeah. one to do it in the West. Right, right. In the, in the, to release in the West. Yeah. yeah. With more content. Yeah. Cause so. Yeah, good. It the, did. The it did well. International editions of, of games, notwithstanding, because there's a lot of those, and they're they're weird and interesting. Uh-huh. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Our our game today is going to be uh fun, but we'll get we'll get to that. So, yeah. Then Yakuza was remade into Kiwami, I believe, and then the prequel is Zero. If if one of you want to walk me through the structure um, of chronologically, so basically there was Yakuza one to five. Then they made Zero, which I think was the first PS4 Yakuza game, but yes. it was on a PS3 engine. Then they made Kiwami 1, which was a remake of the first one, but using Zero's engine. Mm-hmm. And then they've done it for 2, and presumably we might get a, a 3, 4, and 5. I don't know, they ported up... I think maybe the first oh, yeah, just they got remakes them, because they, they were didn't... PS2 games, whereas yeah. 3, 4, and 5 were PS3. But I mean, primarily the plot going forward is going to be about Ichiban, because Kiryu's yeah. story is over. He had seven games. He had a good run. Oh, yeah. No, he had a very good run. He's glad to be retired, I think. Nice. All right. Well, yeah, that was... Uh, okay, so the uh, I, I don't know. Has anyone seen the live-action movie from Japan, 2007, it looks like? I've seen clips of it. Yeah, I have. Oh, you have? How, how was it? Um, yeah. 
it's it's what you'd expect from yeah. somebody making a live action over the top um adaptation like if, have you seen the uh the phoenix Wright adaptation i, I didn't even know that existed oh it, wow. it exists the only clip I've seen of the Yakuza movies is a bit where Goro Majima is peeking around a corner, but he's peeking around with the eye that has an eye patch over it, so yeah, technically yeah. he shouldn't be able to see anything. But and that does like I still can't. He doesn't, he doesn't let like, silly I, things like logic make sense. I, I just wonder whether that was intentional or not by the filmmakers. It oh, it was. Yeah, it, it has to. That that sounds like it's capturing the spirit of the games pretty well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, in September 2020, Sega also reported that they had signed for another live action movie from, uh, looks like some Western studio, um, with the, uh, the makers of 2019 scary stories to tell in the dark. Um, I don't know if y'all have any expectations for that or what that's going to be. I really don't have any expectations. That is an, yeah. I know nothing about it. That's an interesting mix. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a very interesting mix, and so I have absolutely no idea what to expect from it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, let's... Uh, uh, I think we've talked a little bit about the gameplay. One thing that I really want to hear from, from you two is, like, uh, these these games, after reading, the, like, some of the plots um, of, like, the first few games, like, there, there are such serious stories, and, like, they have really, like, prevalent themes that are, like, you know, real-life kind of themes, like, real stuff like 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 it's not it's not the the main story is not like a wacky cabaret thing like it's about it's about like real shit the main stories are generally quite serious it's yeah side side content that's wacky and stupid so that that, game sort of balances itself out yeah exactly that was my question like how 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 does that balance work like there how does how is it able to do both of these things without without like a thematic dissonance there i think it's because it draws a clear line yeah, like and... it's uh, other than like a dragon lets humor into its main story a lot more, but like the original Yakuza games, it was very much like the main story is this very serious crime thing. There's all this different stuff. There's characters. There's betrayal. There's action. There's all this stuff. And then here's a side story where you're trying to distract a crowd from a human statue so he can sneak off and have a piss. Yeah, um, I mean it's a little <laughs> like more did. lighthearted in in Zero because things haven't gone too shit just yet. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's in the corners waiting to pounce in Zero, I, I would say. Zero, you see them at young, so they're a bit more optimistic and energetic. Yeah. Why, like Yakuza 6, all these characters have been through so much bullshit that they're oh, a bit yeah. tired but and I, weary. I would say one of the big themes is idealism versus reality. Yeah. And Kiryu is always an idealist, even despite what he knows. He wants the best for everybody. He He tries to do his best. And he knows that shit's going to get in his way. And sometimes you have to deal with that with a motorcycle to the head. Oh. Yeah, the the, yeah. Uh, the fighting styles in the game are also ridiculous sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I've seen some clips. Like, So the old ones are like more, more beat-em-up kind of stuff. Um, I, I saw some clips from Like like from like from a Dragon, though, which I know is, a, is different because it's turn-based. But like, it seems like... A lot of it is like I found this like I found half of a lamp on the beach. I'm gonna hit you on the head with it. I mean yeah. that's yeah. Yakuza like has a big <laughs> emphasis on just picking up stuff and beating people with up with it. Like you can grab bicycles, just swing them around, or cones or stuff. Of like they have oh, yeah. some they have some gag stuff in there. Like you can pick up a portable stove, turn it on, and shove someone's face on it. Is one like they do some really goofy stuff with the combat, or like all the different fighting styles in Zero have loads of unique moves. Like the beast mode just has things where Kiyu will do inhuman feats of strength in the oh, middle yeah. of a middle of a I mean, street cannot, fight. Cannot, what, what is it? Is it in Yakuza Two that you've got to fight two tigers at once? Yes, you fight <laughs> yeah. two tigers at once. And I remember because in the remake, the fight ends after you've knocked one out, and the second one comes for you. The fight literally ends with the tiger leaping and Kiyu just straight up punching it in the face. Yep, that's right the fight street. ends. Yeah. That's probably um, a one. You fight a bear in Yakuza four or five. Yeah, I think Sajim has to fight bears, fight bears multiple times in Yakuza five. Um, that's that's exciting. Um, I am uh, I am actually waiting on. Uh, so Yakuza Like a Dragon is en route to my house as we speak. Um, I will be uh, I'll be kicking that off right when I finish Persona Five Strikers, uh, which will be probably pretty soon. 
Um, so I'm, I'm excited to get into it though. Like I've been, I had my eye on it last year. The, the, the thing in the trailers that hilariously grabbed my eye for like a dragon, like with me kind of not being familiar with the series was when they advertised next gen crustacean AI. Yeah. They put out a really <laughs> yeah. stupid ad about next gen <laughs> Peach thing. It was really funny. And it was like this super intelligent lobster that was like kind of dancing. And I was like, I have to get There's into like this. <laughs> optimized protagonist optimism was another feature they advertised. Yep. Yeah, I I, and then because that's Ichiban's whole thing. Ichiban is a delightfully optimistic human being. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that that pulls into the next thing. So I know that kind of Ichiban has sort of taken over. He's the new protagonist from Like a Dragon, um, and he'll be kind of the star going forward. Do you want to ever go back to Kiryu and see more of his story, or are you, are you kind of good with uh, uh, starting new? I would be open to more prequel stuff around the Zero Era. I think yeah. that would be more interesting to explore. As for like anything post. Yak is a one. I think otherwise, like I'm happy because um, I might be as a long to... fan, as an absolute lover of Kiyu, I couldn't believe how fast Ichiban won me over in Like a Dragon. <laughs> he, it's, it's, it took maybe an hour or two. But I was like, this man is amazing. I would follow him to the ends of the earth. He is delightful. Congratulations, you have just joined his party. Have a microwave <laughs> yeah. and hit somebody with it. Like Ichiban is such a fun character. He's a lot different to Kiyu. He has like. It's the same sort of things that make Kiyu such a likable character. Ichiban but has them. Going. But yeah, he's much more like emotional. He's a bit naive. He's he's a hopelessly lovable do-gooder. And it's kind of endearing watching him. Yeah, Kiryu's an emotional man trying to steel himself against the world lest it break him. Ichiban is an emotional man who's just like, no, I have got enough love to go around. I am going to force the world yeah. to be happy. By being happy. <laughs> he is he is amazing. I think he's a replacement to Kiyu because he is while sh- he shares a few things with Kiyu, he is all an otherwise nothing like him, but still a great character in that universe, which I think is a really yeah. impressive thing they pulled off. Now one this... one thing that could be very interesting is the ten year gap where Kiryu's in prison. Maybe give us a game about Goro's rise to power in his own. Yeah, game. I would love more Majima games. I feel like he is a series, as the series go, considering like he's playable in zero, but like Yakuza 1 to 6, he just has less screen time with every game and it's yeah. horrible because so, he's such a funny character when he's used properly. This is this is one of those series that I think I think in a, in a way almost similar to, to a Dragon Quest or something like that, by the time that it, it has become big enough to be something that people just know about in the West, like uh, I mean, like, although it didn't sell, like, gangbusters or anything, like, Yakuza Like a Dragon, like, anyone in video games or who's even sort of interested heard about it last year. Like, it, it's, it's you know, in Yakuza 0, like you said, was huge. Even, uh, like, that's the first time I'd heard about the series is when Zero came out. Um, where, where th- this is one of those series that is so huge already. Like, there's so many games in it. Like, I don't know. What would you say to somebody who looks at that and is like, I don't really want to get into this because it's so overwhelming and like, I don't know if I can do all of these games. Don't. I'd say, yeah, pick I just zero don't. Or or... Pick uh, like a dragon. Yeah. And start from there. Yeah. And, and I think that's a good, uh, a good thing to do because like, it is sort of a reboot in a way. And like, they have like, you know, new, new mechanics and new characters and such. And um, I, I don't know. Uh, Tim, have you played like a dragon yet? I have not finished like a dragon. I've started okay. it up. Um, I, one thing that I remember hearing people talk about is that this game really struck them because it is maybe the only JRPG where you don't play as, as teenagers. You're playing as like kind of like adults, like late 30s and 40s who sort of have like fucked up their lives and are kind of looking for a second chance. Yeah, a lot of them are. Yeah. I mean, I, I think some of them are still in their 20s, but it's essentially a lot of man, my life is shit. But we can make it better together. It, it, like yeah, like Ichiban's at least forty, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because he did like eighteen years in prison be- just before like a dragon starts, or like he does eighteen years and then like a dragon's main story kind of kicks off. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that that alone has made it real is what made it really interesting to me because like I'm just like every every JRPG is just like a bunch of teenagers that have to save the world, you know? And it's like, it just seems to be an accepted part of, of JRPGs, and it doesn't have to be. And yeah, I think like, really cool. like I mean, a dragon kind of just defies a lot of JRPG tropes. Like, it's not a big grand save the world thing, it's just about Ichiban trying to rebuild his life, and then yeah. trying to 
protect his friends from danger that he's usually dragged them into to begin with yeah. in a lot of cases. <laughs> And gotcha. the reason why it's a JRPG is just because he loves JRPGs and that's how he focuses. Yeah, there's a. I believe at the start of the game, there's a conversation that implies that the turn-based combat in the game, you're not seeing the actual fight. You're seeing the way Ichiban imagines it happening in his head. Yeah, oh. and, and that's huh. the way that he keeps himself from freaking out too much because it's implied that the reason why he went to jail was because he had a massive freak out in a fight um, and huh. you know lost control. And so he imagines the turn-based combat uh, and actually sort of abides by some of those turn, those rules in actual combat fighting um, to keep himself under control. Okay. Um, like Reed, do you, do a... you have any, uh, any, any questions for fall? I, I, I know you're not talking because you don't want to interrupt anybody. <laughs> if you want to ask anything. <laughs> okay. The floor is mine uh, with my awkward delay. Um, See, everything I hear about Yakuza it makes me both think it doesn't exist um, and that like, I can't bloody wait, I, to, wait to play it. Um, I should mention that I put do, I mean, an article it, about karaoke songs in Yakuza <laughs> and I made rewatch every video she that was in it. And she every didn't video. It. Mm-hmm. I, I have never played a Yakuza game. Like, you have to watch it. Yeah. And I thought it would be important, but it wasn't. It was just Luke wanting to psychologically torture me as usual. So much. knowing nothing about the game, I had to watch 10 uh, bits of karaoke from the series. Absolutely no scrap of context given. Um, but I think what I like from what I've heard about it is that it really captures a culture. Um, that's sort of why I like Shemu is that it was just this slice of life in uh, a Japanese town. And everything was very intricate. Everything was very well researched. Um, and I think it was, just, it was very atmospheric. It sounds atmospheric. Is it, you know, ha- oh, it is can you just sort of piss yeah. about in it? Yes. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. No, if you want to play sightseeing, and this is probably, you know, if when, when we get around to playing it, there's a very likely chance it'll console tour because uh, Kamarocho, uh, the, the fictional. Um, location that most of the series takes place in is in some cases a one-for-one recreation of uh the red light district <clears throat> there's also just... sotenbori which is dotenbori they've yep. done Dot- dotenbori o- is Clip. even there's more a... one-to-one there's okinawa what else is that sapporo and hokkaido have look spots mm-hmm. in some of the games they've done a lot i think there's a nice. sendai section in four this is just Persona 5 Strikers. Yay. Exactly. No, Persona Game 5 side? Strikers is Persona wanting to be a Yakuza. Game. Okay. No, Yakuza 4 is pretty much entirely in Kamurocho. It's 5 uh, that has like every, right, all the five. different protagonists are in different locations. Yeah. The later ones run together for me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that's cool. Uh, so do you guys uh, want to close out? Are there How many ghosts are in these games? Are there enough ghosts? There's a ghost yeah. subquest in one of them, I remember. Yeah. Okay. Where yeah, that's, um, that's one. you get, of you course, there is. Buy a, a video t- You buy a videotape off a guy who's like freaking the fuck out about it. So you buy it, and then you go. Well, I think this is Yakuza Zero. So you buy the videotape, you go watch it, and it's basically like a ring parody. And then, <laughs> okay, as you leave the building, some guy of course they did a ring parody. Like, yeah. uh, he's like, he's like claiming to be an exorcist. He's like, you've got bad omens. For this much money, I will help you. And then. As it does those cutscenes, it keeps cutting to shots of like a like some, someone that looks like the girl from the Grudge or the Ring in the background. And then when you go, I I can't remember exactly what it is, but I think like it's blatantly a scam. Yeah. But then at the end of the sub quest, after you scare off the Exorcist, um, the girl appears again and she sort of creeps up to Kiyu, and then the videotape drops and smashes. But when Kiyu turns around, the girl's nowhere to be seen. Oh, okay. And there was one in Judgment, the spin-off, where I think you're... Because in Judgment, you play as a private detective, and so you do side cases, that's sort of the main story, and one of them is somebody hires you to try and find out if the apartment he wants to rent is haunted. And I think it ends up turning out that his girlfriend is pretending to haunt the apartment to try and get the price of it lowered. (laughs) Which is just a really (laughs) yakuza twist. And, and of course, there's, there's loads, a bad there's idea, loads of really. ghost shit. I'm sure there's plenty. 
There's, I'm and, sure there's plenty of other ghost jokes in, the, oh, in those yeah. games. And, and of course, there's the, the metaphor so of got ghosts a... of the past weighing everybody down. Yes, true. <laughs> so Go there's ahead. a decent amount of ghosts, is what we're saying. We are filled to the brim with ghosts, yeah. Yeah. both metaphorical and I literal. Like I'm happy with it. Um, I'm I am genuinely super excited to to play uh, like a dragon when that gets here. It so it is not just like as a Yakuza fan, but honestly, as a I think it's genuinely just like a dragon is genuinely just one of the funniest games I've ever played. Oh yeah, okay. if, if you've like, played Dragon Quest, there's a lot in it. There's um, oh, the, it riffs on all, like tons of JRPGs. Oh, yeah, My no, favorite I, is the extremely unsubtle parody of Pokemon in that game. Ooh. <laughs> I don't think I've gotten there yet. It's pretty early. It's the guy who gives you the tracking, the way of tracking all the different enemies. Oh, that one. Yeah, okay, yeah. That whole subquest is an extremely unsubtle riff on Pokemon, and yeah. I loved it. I was laughing through the whole thing. Oh, I, I was great. thinking something like even more blatant of like uh, capturing people in Pokeballs. No, it's no, not that. It's just uh, the, the, the it's kind of character. mandatory side quest that gives yeah. you your sort of like enemy tracking thing, so you can keep track of every different enemy you fought in the game and what they're strong and weak against. Oh, uh, okay. And Type the whole thing, the whole thing is just an extremely unsubtle parody of Pokemon to the point that like <laughs> the character will one of the characters straight up says lyrics from the Pokemon anime theme. Uh, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just made me laugh my head off. Uh, okay, I'm excited. Um, yeah, it's time time for games. Uh, we're playing Localize This. So this is uh, this was born of the idea that... Uh, so like I said, the Yakuza games, that series is called Like a Dragon in Japan. It is not called Yakuza. Um, probably because they wouldn't allow it to be sold in stores. <laughs> um, also because but... I think there's actually another long-running like crime drama television series called Yakuza. Oh, interesting. That could totally be it too. Is there like a sprinkler in somebody's house? It's gone now. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what I have here is some Japanese games. Um, what I am gonna do is uh, uh, give you the give you the name that uh, I'll first tell you the localized English name, and then I'm gonna give you three options for what the original Japanese name of this game was. Okay. Um, some of these will be easier at the beginning; Hopefully. others will be more difficult <laughs> at the end. Um, okay. As usual, this is the way for uh, Nirav to laugh at us. Yeah. Yeah, of course. It's it's just fun. I like being a game master. What can I say? Um, well, you know what? I roll to uh, teleport intercompanlia. You roll to what? Teleport nice. intercompanlia. It's the best spell in uh, Hackmaster. Okay. Um, You're I... now in a different game that I am running. Okay. No. <laughs> Um, no, that's a new one. You're going to have to add Tim's rule where you, was... you can't change the game in time games. You can't games. hijack the podcast. <laughs> you can't hijack <laughs> the game. Um, okay, so the first game is Mega Man. So I don't, this Rock one is Man. one I... Yeah, I, I figured that's people would know yeah. this one. So, Ro yeah, Rock Man. Um, that's fun. Ro everyone knows Rock Man. Everyone loves Rock Man. Okay, so how about uh, Fatal Frame? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a chance first to see if anyone knows it. Does anyone know what Fatal Frame was called in Japanese? Um, Ghost Cannon. Uh, I feel like, I think. yeah, some, something picture. Uh, I'll give you the choices here. Zero, Mirror, or End. I think Mirror. Mirror. It, in a way, yeah. a camera is called yeah, that like a Mirror. Right. Yeah. Nope, no, it's exactly. Zero. Which is the, the uh, game franchise what? is just called Zero mm. in Japan. <laughs> just zero. Oh. Just okay, zero. We were, a bit yeah. off. We, were, we were on a, a good line of thinking, but no, it wasn't sure. that smart. All right. Let's. Uh, how about The Evil Within? Uh, was this game called. I feel like I know this. Uh, it... you, may, you may know it. So here are, here are your options Demon Infection, Psycho Break, or Black Earth. It's definitely. I feel not like it's Psycho Break. Break. I think there is another. Oh, is it not? Called... Is it definitely? I feel, like, not... I feel <laughs> like there's another series called Psych. No, I'm thinking of Psycho Pass. <laughs> it might be Psycho yeah, Break. I yeah, I feel like this is Psycho Break. This one is Psycho Break. Yeah, you got it. 
I was thinking of Psychopaths for a second. Psychopaths is an yeah. anime, which is one of my favorite animes. Everyone go yeah, watch it. Yeah, I, I, I think you have to be happy or games. will kill you. I uh, gave up one the, of those the, the one games cops. on PS Plus with it. The, yeah, the PS for ages. Yeah, the, the PS4 happy, game is a yeah, yeah. It's a visual novel. I've, it's all right. Um, okay, so uh, Pokemon Conquest. Does anyone remember this game? First of all, yes. Is that the GameCube. Yes. Oh my no, god, massive Pokemon Game Game. Conquest fan. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> um, I was thinking of Colosseum. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon Conquest is it was a uh, handheld. It was a Game Boy Advance, right? Was that right, Tim? Yes. No, yeah, no. Um, DS. Oh, DS. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. So th- this uh this was a tactical turn based strategy thing, but you were a, a a warrior in feudal Japan, and you had to fight for your lord using Eevee? Yeah. Um, it was and so you'd recruit people yeah. with Brilliant. Pepeg and Pikachu and Oshawott. And I actually know this one because it's a crossover with the Nobunaga's Ambition series. So it's just yes. Pokemon Nobunaga Ambition. Yep, you are right. That is what it is. <laughs> nice. Uh, Pokemon. I think it was officially Pokemon X Nobunaga's Ambition because it was like a crossover. X or plus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Awesome. So how about Samurai Showdown? Uh, I don't know what that was called. With the, yeah, in the, the West, we get it without the W. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> So in uh, in Japanese, these are some options for you: Samurai Spirits, Warriors Night Final, Masters of Battle Spirit. I think it's Samurai Spirits. I'm going with, I'm going with Warriors Night Final. Oh, that sounds was. cool. I want it to be called that, okay. so I'm going to go with that. Yeah, Samurai Spirits is right. <laughs> it's it's simple. God damn it. <laughs> uh, let's do let's do a more let's do a more fun one. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Um, <laughs> there's if you don't you don't yes. know this then you don't know this it, you nah. would no it's okay here are your options and I'm I'm gonna try to like just give you some time to think fruit of the mysterious tree earth chapter oh. Hyrule hero oh. <laughs> second wind season Triforce of the gods space time chapter. I'm, I'm go feeling the, the first one. one. I can't remember the mysterious one. tree earth chapter. Yeah. It is fruit of the mysterious tree earth There's chapter. No reason. I had to think about it for a second. Yes, but nice. The, the 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 tree is firmly uh in part in the mythology and it's in the logo. There we go. Um all right, here's another stupid one. Uh Deadly Premonition. Anyone know that one? Uh, I know Deadly Premonition. What is it in Japanese? Um, I have some cute ones here. Um, <laughs> uh, how about Lost Forest Adventure, Small Town Ghost, or Red Seeds Profile? I feel like Small Town Ghost. I like Small Ghosts. Town Ghost. I, I like the Red vibe. I, I, like Re- I like Small Town Ghost, but I think Red Seed Profile. <laughs> yeah, it is Red Seed Profile. I, I just Small Town Ghost sounds it. cozy to me. <laughs> That that's gonna be Tim, you're, you're one of these. our um, that's gonna be our good games inked next game is Small Town Ghost. <laughs> small Town Ghost. <laughs> I look forward to Small Town Ghost. Uh, okay, so we got two more. Um, Metal Gear Solid. Do you happen to know that one? Uh, no, no, not off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, how about here's some options: Metal Gear Head Subversion. <laughs> Metal Stealth Agent Protocol or Metal Gear Ghost Babble. I mean, I no, I'm, like I'm fairly sure it's the second one. Of the game. <laughs> metal, you think Metal Stealth Agent Protocol? Yeah, it's oh, Sorry, what'd that. you say, Luke? Oh, for God's sake. Sorry, guys. Buddy. That's alright. Um, yeah, this one, this Metal Gear Solid in Japan is called Metal Gear Ghost Babble. Yeah. <laughs> what? Because uh, <laughs> it's still the Metal Gear, but yeah. Because Ghost, Ghost Babble. Is that yeah. not? All right. I got I got one more Zelda for you. Okay. Uh, this is Spirit Tracks. Mm-hmm. No. Um, Choo Choo Train Adventure. No. Uh... I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So some options here. Train Adventure to Hyrule, Earth Whistle, Train Whistle, Flood Train, God Power, 
Fog train god power, please, please let it be that. <laughs> you could uh, train adventure to Hyrule, but it is actually Earth Whistle Train Whistle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't. Yeah, there's no Earth Whistle <laughs> in this. Yeah. Series, so I don't know. Earth whistle train Whistle. <laughs> Uh, when, I, when I'm next at the train station and they blow the whistle, so I'm just going to immediately think, Earth Whistle Train Whistle. It's, it's going to occur to yeah. me till the end of time. It's obvious. All right. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and, I guess, close out if Luke is, is Luke back. I'm here, yeah. Okay, cool. Let, let's uh, go ahead and close out. So thank you um, to, I guess, to Nagoshi, I guess. We'll thank him for this one because he did yes. some work. Um, he put in the fucking work. Um, Todd, you didn't do shit. Speaking of uh, Todd Howard, though, the Bethesda deal has closed, so Microsoft does own Bethesda now. Phil Spencer now owns Todd Howard. That's true. That is how. Nice. Uh, so do we have to? Nice do, we have to fa- do we have to? Do we have to thank Phil Spencer, uh, Phil Spencer at the end of our podcast now? Oh, I don't want to. He's all right. Uh, You're yeah, all well, right, Phil Spencer. I'll, th- I'll, I'll give thank- you that. I'll I'll thank him when he sends me a, a game, like an exclusive game. <laughs> Please that I can buy on the Xbox. Only you can Fallout play. 3 remastered. Yeah. Oh, Remaster God. it. Imagine. Give Black uh, that Isle be... the, 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 the range. Unironically. Another, Good idea. Know, game. The, the thing that I really actually want is for In Exile, now that they're both owned by Microsoft, to rem- remake Fallout 1 and 2. Like, that 100% is what I want. Like, that in would the be Wasteland 3 really engine. good. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Just do it. It's absolutely do it. that would um, be a genius idea. But I don't think they do it because no one cares about no one cares about those games enough apart from weird nerds like That's true. us. So Yeah. Uh, sorry Tim, what were you saying? Oh, and Fallout Tactics too while you're at it. Yeah, just stick it in there. Fuck yeah. who cares? Put it in there. <laughs> All right. Who um, cares if it doesn't fit with the lore? Can they can they put the cancelled Fallout free in there as well? Yeah. Yeah, Van Buren. Yeah, shove it in. I don't care. I know right. a lot of uh, Vegas had a lot of the Van Buren stuff in it, but yeah. no reason not to go whole hog. Okay, so uh, yeah, you can find us at GameLuster.com and at YouTube.com slash GameLuster. Um, and you can find us on Twitter at GameLustersPod. Give us a follow. We're really cool and we do good memes um, and also some bad ones. So yeah, thank you to our uh, our guests, uh, Tim. Uh, would you have anything uh, you want to you wanna plug? What you're working on? Uh, I mean, I'm still working on a... Um, the next episode of uh, console tours it's sitting on my computer i just need to throw in all the images which is the hardest part is trying to find the right images from kate's years of japan to, to throw in especially because we're finally up to the part where we're where kate lived for two years mm, okay okay that'd be cool i'm excited that's in it's in hokkaido right yeah yeah. Okay. Yeah, because nice. we're doing Sinnoh and all of it's Hokkaido, but we're at the yeah. part of Sinnoh that is that represents where Kate lived. Okay. Nice. Um, uh, Luke, what you doing right now? Uh, I'm hoping to get some more videos on in the work soon. I've got a couple of ideas I'm toying with, but I've just been weighed down by coursework. But that's now I'm clear for a bit, so hopefully I can get some more videos done soon. Okay. Uh, Re, what you doing? Um, I'm gonna get a piece on our sister site Flick Cluster soon about the One Division finale and my thoughts on it. Um, hope to do some more video stuff. Maybe I'll see if I can bully Kate into playing Pub Encounter. Otherwise, I'll just get drunk and play that on my own and do that for the entertainment of all you guys. Pub Encounter is a fun I mean, game. You, you should watch Kate our first episode on it. That's my plug. It. <laughs> <laughs> would that would be ideal. Yeah. Kate to look. I mean, Kate will not say no to getting drunk and playing a ridiculous game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, and um, I, uh, yeah, I've. Uh, please go look at my my shadow video. I I spent a lot of time the video on video. I did not approve. I did not a, a like. <laughs> okay. I wish you told me about this beforehand. I would have said no. You're not doing this. You're not spent, defending that game. I spent actual weeks on this. Uh, I didn't defend it. I, I was just uh, I was just speaking facts about how it sort of defined literature um, by giving but, us an example of what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and like also everything to do, but also don't do this. You know. In general, uh, don't be Shadow the Hedgehog. Don't look. Like, don't do that. But like, if you do, then you will. You will have like basically created another universe. 
uh, just inside of you win some, like, you li- literature, some. literature as we know it has ceased to exist. And whether that's a good or a bad thing is up to you. I think that's artist. I think that's art, you know, right there in it. Um, so uh, anyway, I think I am probably this month going to be doing a video on um, like uh, Hayao Miyazaki and, and Studio Ghibli's impact on on video games. Just like little notes, references, inspirations, things like that. Probably a lot less dem- like, you know, uh, lo- it will cause me less insanity, I, I think. Um, just make sure that you get your things in chronological order. It, what do you mean? Well, it, you, you know, uh, a lot of people will try and cite uh, stuff that came back before oh the movie i see what you're as saying being inspired by it so like yeah, uh, okay. a, a lot of people have done that for uh what it, princess kaguya have said yeah that inspired you know okami when that's physically literally impossible yeah just with that time works yeah yeah fair enough I mean, they're both um, inspired by the same thing yes which is ukiyo-e paintings mm-hmm. but okay yeah so um i also want to uh, this isn't really a plug but i just watched uh, Raya and the Last Dragon uh, last night. Um, if you can acquire that somehow, like I, I found a copy that fell off the back of a truck, and so it was free. Yeah, it's amazing um, how uh, little show? bits of data can just fall off. It's a truck. it's crazy how it happens. Um, yeah. anyway, this was a magnificent film. Uh, had some of the best score, uh, probably the best score in a Disney movie in the last twenty years, and like, quite honestly, like just some of the best visual, like the best animation I've ever seen. I think just like so visually striking. So make sure to watch it. If you're, if you're a fan of animation and just want to see it fucking cranked up to the next level, like do it. Um, anyway. Um, yeah. So you can uh, remember to give us a rating on iTunes. We have another one. Uh, we we have two now. So shout out to grace, uh, for, for throwing us a, a five-star rating on, on iTunes. Uh, we're racking them up now. Um, Okay, so uh, yeah, I guess last word for our, our winner, which is I think me and uh, and Luke, right? I yes. guess since we both yeah, it was you and Luke. Yeah, what uh, what are we gonna? We have to do something to get out of here, like some sort of like incantation or like catchphrase or something. Uh, something, something. Mario Kart Double Dash, best Mario Kart. Uh, okay, that was a good incantation. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it's an incantation to in- encourage rage within Re. Okay. Um, and it works. Why don't we just and I both can't say... speak to end the podcast, so it works. Why don't we... Okay, that's a good idea. So, Luke, why don't we both say something to try to enrage Re more um, <laughs> than the other at the same time? And we'll just hey, Rhi, knowing that my delay means I can't either. counter it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I got... I'm going to write more articles about Yakuza and force Reed to be the one to review them. Uh, great. Okay, so uh, I, I'm going to... Um, you know what? I'm, I'm going to write a whole series of articles on why a Dragon Age Inquisition is more intelligent than Dragon Age Origins. And two. I think that'll do it. The, Im- the amount of pain that I felt hearing both of those, especially Nirav's. Nirav won. That's like sort of a, an attack right at the heart, I think. Uh, heart of the beast. That was. Okay. So I mean, I, I didn't even finish off. Inquisition because I, I got profoundly bored by it. Yeah, Inquisition hour, so. wasn't that great. So um, I, I don't think this was, this wasn't as punchy as I would want an outro to be. Maybe we can just yell a word. Uh, count, count down to three. Tim, count us down. One, two, three. Just yell a word like okay. Yakuza word. All right. Uh, Sun, ni, ich, ichiban. Go, Mario go. Kart Double Dash Best Mario Kart. Re is wrong. Okay, I'm and I'm I'm afraid I won't be able to go into a hot spring in Japan because I have a tattoo and I think I'm a Yakuza member. All right, that's the end of it. <laughs> wow, very authentic. <laughs>